What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about AK 9mm pistols. This is the Century Arms NAC 9X. You may be familiar with the NAC 9 pistol that came out a year ago. Uh, it was just a pistol in 9mm that did not have the brace. It was just a flat trunnion back here with a sling swivel and uh, wood furniture, Romanian uh, plastic pistol grip. Real basic pistol that did take uh, Glock mags as well with this mag magazine adapter that we're going to talk about more later. Uh, but this is an evolution of that, that gun, that pistol, because now it comes with uh, Magpul MOE furniture, Magpul grip, and this new factory installed uh, M4 buffer tube slash brace adapter that's uh, uh, mounted into the trunnion nice and hard. This thing is rock solid in there. That's not an L bracket underneath the pistol grip. So that's a huge selling point right there, guys. This is a 9mm AK. There are several um, 9mm AKs out on the market right now. So this is just one option. PSA has their uh, AKV, I think it's called. It's a 9mm AK. It looks very similar to this. Um, they had an initial launching of theirs and it had some issues that the uh, Mac from the Military Arms Channel had some issues with. They they uh, it had major malfunctions, just wasn't working. If you guys saw the video, and uh, PSA did good and fixed all the parts that, uh, that had issues. So uh, that's one option to go with, and I'm sure it's a fantastic gun. I haven't had my hands uh, on that one yet, but I plan on doing it. Uh, also, Kiapa was importing um, a Pac-9. They called it. it was a little shorter, six six inch barrel version of basically the same gun as this, made in the same uh, Romanian factory. But um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple other options out there. And of course, there's a Fitch Yaz that's like legit. Um, there's other 9mm um, sub guns that look like this too, like the SIG MPX and uh, the CZ Evo and, and a bunch of other ones too as well. But this is the AK version of a 9mm sub gun, uh, basically an AK pistol. Now, I'm a big fan of 9mm um, AK and AR pistols in general. Uh, I have a few. Uh, here is my Glock 17 mounted in a Fab Defense, um, basically a pistol that's turned into a PCC or a pistol caliber carbine, which is pretty awesome. This is my other 9mm um, pistol. This is uh, built off of an AR platform, obviously, but it is 9mm with the Stern Defense uh, magazine adapter. That's pretty awesome. This is my 300 Blackout pistol. 10 inch barrel and this is my 556 uh, pistol with a seven and a half inch barrel uh, the use for this um, gun in my opinion uh, this is not a main battle rifle not a survival rifle for the most part there's better uh, guns for that option this is more like a truck gun uh, a range toy fun gun and a home defense gun so uh, I don't really see this thing being used uh, out in combat, in wars, or um, contractors overseas, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff like that. I don't see this as being uh, a gun used in that capacity. There's much better options for that stuff. But as a home defense gun, in a clean environment, urban environment, home defense, absolutely. All right, so let's go front to back on this thing and just kind of uh, take a look at it from the outside and work our way in. I'll get super close up on this thing so you guys can see some of the pros and cons of this thing as well. I do a pros and cons approach to everything, so I will talk about some of the negatives of this thing, but I want to talk about obviously all the positives as well because there's a lot of good things about this gun. It's fantastic. Right out the gate, this thing is made in Romania. All right, so looking at the receiver, as you can see right here, it says Draco. And over here it says NAC9. 9 by 19 millimeter Century Arms, Georgia, Vermont, made in Romania, Novo Modul. The gunsmiths in Romania know what the heck they're doing. They've been making guns for decades. It's not made at the Kugir or Kugir, I don't know how you say that, factory that, like, say, uh, this SAR1 was made, but it is made in Romania at another factory called Novo Modul. Uh, some of the features on this thing this has an 11.14 inch barrel. So, uh, decent length as far as uh, 9mm goes. You're going to get some good uh, accuracy, I'm sure, with a longer you know, 11 inch barrel. And uh, 
some decent velocity as well because most handguns are what four or five inches this is 11 so you need some decent velocity out of this as well up front here it's got a threaded muzzle with a uh, thread protector it has your standard AK detent that you kind of push in there with your finger this is threaded half by 28 for us Americans which is awesome because uh, I believe the uh, previous models with the wood furniture and stuff that the original Mac 9 from a year ago had the Russian threads so now we have the American half by 28 and what that does is allow you to put um, any other half by 28 um, muzzle device that you prefer like say this uh, flash can that I like this threads right on so I really like that look with this flash can uh, also of course uh, suppressors that are threaded for half by 28 so it's awesome that they did that good job uh, the guys at, in uh, Romania thank you appreciate that I'll put the uh, thread protector back on moving back this is not a gas block this is just a front sight uh, that uh, holds a gas tube again this is not gas operated it's fully blowback operated so you got your standard AK front sight there if you see hooded front sight you'll need an AK tool to raise that uh, front sight post up or down and also to move the barrel from side to side uh, it looks like from the factory it's perfectly centered so high hopes that that's uh, actually accurate when I take it out to the range the gas tube is not a gas tube like I said it's just a tube to hold the uh, the bolt extension that comes through here so no heat will be transferred in here at all but you do uh, get to use any standard AK handguard so if I wanted to I could throw this wood from this uh, SAR1 onto here so any standard Romanian AK furniture or any other AK furniture for that matter should fit on here no problem and it does remove like a normal AK the handguards are just your standard AK handguards, nothing special there. So that's nice. You can put pretty much any AK handguard you want. And if you don't know about the MOE handguards, uh, they have the uh, M-lock slots on both sides. And they have uh, M-lock slots on the bottom as well if you want to put um, angled foregrips or whatever. It's got a mini hand stop here so you don't go in front of the muzzle and blow your fingers off. Just a really nice setup. Uh, also has a heat shield on the inside, which is also very nice to keep this gun cool when you're holding it with your hands up here. Moving back, the uh, front trunnion here. This uh, is pretty much standard AK fare here. Doesn't really look much different than most AKs you'll see out there. Your uh, gas tube retaining lever is just your standard for the most part. It flips up and you remove it. Your rear sight is just your uh, graduated front sight, like you see on most AKs, but this one's a little different. It only goes out to 400 meters. Um, good luck shooting a 9mm round out to 400 meters. But the receiver is just uh, pretty much your standard uh, Romanian receiver, stamped steel receiver with the dimples. Uh, as you can see, the rivets look dang near perfect because Romanians know how to smash rivets they've been doing it like I said for decades we'll look at both sides here those rivets look really good uh, I've said this in many of my AK videos um, rivets can be done wrong you can smash them too much and they're like pancakes and they put um, you know waves into the stamp receiver messing it all up so they're too tight and when they're too tight, they can also break off too after uh, who knows how many rounds. They could just snap because they're too tight. And then you can also under rivet these things where they're just smashed um, not enough. And now it looks like a mushroom and they're poking out um, above the receiver nice and loose and sloppy. So uh, that's never good. Uh, you also see the YXY stamped into the uh, hammer pin and trigger pin. So that's a, a nice feature. Again, like I said, there's no scope rail here, so that could be a pro and a con. So the SAR1 right here does have that standard AK scope rail mount. That's what it looks like if you've never seen one before. And this one does not have that. Uh, some might say that that looks good, nice and clean. Some people don't like it, big and bulky. Also too, when you have a folder, it gets in the way. So again, it's a pro or a con, just depends on your opinion. Uh, looking at this side here, 
on this side again there's dimples on the receiver that dimple there is is actually to stiffen the receiver if you don't know it's not actually meant to um, stabilize the magazine although it does stabilize the magazine it's primarily there to stiffen the receiver so it's nice that the nine millimeter uh, NAC 9x has that as well uh, the selector lever just your standard selector lever like you would see on any AK matter of fact you can swap this out for Krebs or or whatever if you want to upgrade this uh, something that other uh, competitor 9 millimeter AKs had issues with was they did not have the over travel bump out on the dust cover this one does if you look closely there you can see that it has that little bump out that is stamped into the dust cover and that allows you to push this thing hard you push it hard like that and it's not going to over travel and go all the way up past the dust cover so smart that the uh, guys in Romania did that properly. You can see the cuts into the receiver also to stop the uh, selector lever from going too far. Uh, standard AK uh, over travel stop here as well for going down. So up and down. Also says F for fire, S for safe. Pretty standard stuff there. Something to note on the trigger. Uh, this is built in Romania, so um, it doesn't look like the trigger is the uh, Century Arms Rack 1 trigger, which is a fantastic trigger. I have it on my uh, SAR1 over there. Um, it would have a C stamped into here if it was the Rack 1, and I don't think it is. Single hook trigger, as you can see, even cut into the uh, receiver there. It's just one slot open for a single hook. Uh, there would be two slots here if it was for double hook, so that may limit your uh, aftermarket upgrade ability. So I don't know about that yet. We'll, we'll talk about it in the future. It's just your standard AK Romanian trigger. Uh, down here you have your mag release lever, pretty standard stuff, nothing's changed there. Standard trigger guard, nothing's changed there. The pistol grip is upgraded from the Romanian plastic pistol grip to a Magpul MOE pistol grip, which is nice. Nice and grippy, it's got a storage compartment down there as well, so very nice there. All right, let's talk about this dust cover. It is unique. I like the fact that it is beefed up and stronger than a normal AK dust cover. Just like on a crank, I like that. As you can see right up here, there's a roll pin and the tip of the dust cover is connected. So it's not going anywhere. Easy to field strip, easy to clean. You don't have to worry about losing it. There's also a steel spine that goes all the way to right about there. That steel spine is spot welded onto the sheet metal dust cover. So it's not going anywhere. There's about four or five spot welds holding that on. And then on top of that, there are four screws that go through the Picatinny rail into the uh, dust cover itself. And then in the back, if you look right here, it has a reinforcement plate that is also spot welded onto it. Nice and beefy. That's pretty nice. So years of slamming that dust cover like that should uh, hold up well it also keeps it nice and strong as far as securing the dust cover from wobbling and losing zero the way the uh, recoil spring is designed there's a wedge shape right there you see that 45 degree wedge that shape constantly pushes down on that reinforcement right there so the dust cover is nice and tight and it's always tight as long as that spring is pushing on that wedge it holds nice and tight. Look at that. Of course, all AK dust covers are going to have a little bit of movement, but in the grand scheme of all dust covers I've ever seen, that's one of the tightest ones I've ever seen on an AK because of that setup there. Uh, the only way to get this thing tighter is if you had a locking bolt or a locking nut back here that you could wrench down on and tighten this thing down. But so far, so good. For a red dot, I think it should hold up okay. Another thing too, it doesn't have a bolt here like on uh, say the PSA, AKV. They have a bolt here that could vibrate loose. They put Loctite on it so uh, you don't have to uh, worry about it coming loose. But they say you never have to touch it on the PSA. Well, if you never have to touch it, then why even have it? Clearly the Romanians figured out a way to do it without it. So I think uh, this design not having that bolt there allows it to never slide back and forth. I do have to say that this uh, Picatinny rail is not aluminum though. It, it looks like it is polymer, but it is bolted down with four 
uh, hex head bolts there. Is that good or bad? Who knows? I'd rather have it in the one but it is what it is. I'm sure they did it to save money. All right, so moving to the back. Here is a huge selling point to this uh, AK pistol versus other uh, AK pistols out there. Uh, normally, uh, the original NAC-9 was just a pistol with a flat trunnion back here and a sling swivel. Uh, this one is a nice upgrade. The NAC-9X has a machined steel adapter back here that bolts into the uh, threaded hole in the back of this receiver. No longer do you have to use uh, a sling swivel for one. You don't have to use that. And you don't have to use the L bracket styles too that you see that where you loosen up the pistol grip and put the L bracket under here and then this thing kind of just flops out here in the wind. So this thing is absolutely rock solid on there, the way it's mounted on. It's phenomenal. Look at that. That is awesome. Nice and strong. Love it. And that allows you to uh, use any M4 buffer tube uh, or pistol brace like uh, the Shockwave um, notched or dimpled buffer tube out here. It's not even a buffer tube, it's just a tube. So you can use the Shockwave uh, blade brace. It's pretty nice. And you can take this off and put um, an SB Tactical, whatever you want, whatever your favorite brace is, you can pretty much put it on here. You could also put a uh, US machine guns or other companies out there that make folding adapters because it is an M4 setup. So you could put a folding adapter on here, no problem. So that's nice. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so let's look uh, on the inside. All right, so on the inside, you'll see your recoil spring and it comes out just like any other AK. You push it forward and then pull it out. It's just a stubby version of an AK recoil spring. Now, if you look right here, this is a plastic buffer and that's essential to the operation of any AK-9 for them for that matter. PSA and the Pac-9 and the other ones out there, they also have buffers as well and they're all different. But this one is one, uh, one solid piece for the most part and unlike the PSA one that's two different pieces that are kind of an afterthought, uh, the guys in Romania got this one right, right out the gate. It's a big chunky strong piece of uh, polymer now i don't know how long this will last getting impacted by this bolt all the time but um i have pretty good faith that this should last a long time it's pretty beefy compared to other buffers i've seen out there i can't imagine this thing getting worn down or broken but we'll see uh, in my testing now this is essential like i said it has to be in there because if not it would allow the bolt to go so far back that a empty shell or even um live rounds could get inside the trigger group there. So you cannot run this without that buffer. All right, so let's look at the bolt. It's literally one big hunk of steel mass moving back and forth in the gun. Uh, this is normally where you would see a piston on a regular AK. This is not a piston. It's just a weight to absorb that nine millimeter recoil. And then here's the center part of your bolt, all one piece, no moving parts for the most part. Uh, it does look like it's actually been polished from the factory, which is nice. Nice and polished, so this will ride over other metal interfacing parts nice and smooth when you're shooting it. Uh, there, there's the firing pin on the back, right there, if you guys can see that. It is spring-loaded as far as the firing pin goes. You can see that right there in the front. Here's your 9mm bolt face. Here's your extractor right here. That's held in with a pin. If you want to remove it and clean it and all that good stuff and maybe repair the spring after who knows how many thousands of rounds. And then if you look right here, this charging handle, that charging handle is not milled into the carrier like you would see on a normal AK. It's actually a separate steel piece that's inserted into a hole. And then there's a roll pin that holds this charging handle in place. It goes all the way through to the bottom, as you can see right there. So that's actually pretty nice. It looks really clean and so much cleaner than this uh, Romanian SCR1 that has the clunky charging handle just ground into the carrier. So yeah, pretty nice piece.
and uh, low tech. And if you look right here on the right side of the uh, bolt, there's like a angled cut. And what that is, is almost like a shell deflector on an AR-15, but instead of being on the receiver, it's actually built into the bolt itself. So that allows the shell to come flying out and slap against this and then fly out the gun. So that's what that is in case you're wondering. All right, let's look on the inside. So starting from the front, here's another look at the trunnion. It's pretty much one big block of steel. And then there's your nine millimeter chamber. Now right here, you can see there's a lot of material built up around the magazine well. And uh, again, that probably helps with um, spent shells from falling into the trigger group. That's nice. Everything is kind of um, braced up like you would see uh, on the new PSAs that have that Mac brace. They already have this built in straight from the factory. Again, good job, Romanians. Uh, there is your hammer. This looks like it's polished from the factory. That's not done by shooting it. That's done by some guy with a polishing tool and made that nice and smooth. It's nice. I like it. There's your trigger. I don't know if you guys can see it. Your trigger hook, single hook right there. You can see the springs. The springs are just your standard firearm springs you would see in America. Very popular in our kind of guns. Um, but uh, not the Romanian or Russian style braided springs. You don't see those in there. I also don't see a, a uh, retaining plate either. So you could probably add a retaining plate. I don't know. Well, we'll give it a try later. I don't see a retaining plate. Selector lever installs just like any other AK, just like that. So if you want to put a Krebs or whatever, you can do that. Push it down. Pistol grip mounts just like any other AK with a T nut right there. And right here you can see this little pointy piece of metal. That's your ejector. Um, pretty simple stuff comes out hits the brass and chucks it out. It's held in place with two flathead style screws All right, so to reassemble the neckline X is pretty simple. You're going to install the bolt first Just like you normally would on any AK Slide it forward now. Here's something I want to point out by the way You see how I slid it forward? No problem on the PSA you have to actually You actually have to push the hammer down and then slide it forward I don't know why they do it that way. Uh, I don't know if it's a design issue, I don't know. But on this one, as you can see the guys in Romania, you don't have to do that. You just put it in here and slide it forward, just like on any other AK. So good job Romanians, once again. And then uh, now you put your buffer in the back here. It only goes one way because it's fatter on one side and skinnier on the other, same here. Fatter here, skinnier here. So slide it forward is what I do. Kind of slide it forward and drop it in just like that and you can see the channel for your recoil spring recoil spring goes in just like this like on any other ak you've ever owned or seen just like that dust cover comes down and then you just smack it and you are set you're back together just like that all right so let's take a closer look at this factory installed m4 buffer tube adapter or brace adapter i already loosened up the castle nut for the video it was pretty tight when i got it but it wasn't staked so what you do is you just loosen up that castle nut and then there's a little set screw i don't know if you guys can see it right there it's a little set screw that interfaces with the channel on your m4 buffer tube or brace so you'll just take a little allen wrench and you'll Loosen that set screw up. Once that set screw is backed out enough, you can start unscrewing your buffer tube or your brace tube. Just like that. So there's your shockwave brace and tube with the dimples. All right guys, so there is one of the hugest selling points of this pistol, this factory installed M4 buffer tube slash brace adapter and it has a huge eight millimeter bolt that bolts this steel piece into the back trunnion so super solid you don't have to worry about this thing uh, breaking off or bending off like uh, the L brackets of the old days okay so to get this adapter off you just take an eight millimeter wrench and unscrew it I already loosened it up a little and then it comes off just like that 
that's what it looks like right there machine steel piece as you can see there's a little set screw right there to keep it from rotating so very simple but very effective and then on the back of the pistol it's just like your standard NAC 9 right there with the threaded hole alright so and the very last thing we're going to talk about is the Glock 9mm adapter on the Draco uh, NAC 9X this thing is made out of polymer which can be a pro or a con to some people they probably want this thing to be machined out of aluminum it seems to be uh, real high quality um, high impact polymer the magazine release itself um, it looks like it's actually uh, cast metal so it looks like a steel part it doesn't feel like aluminum yeah that's metal which is kind of odd you would think it would be plastic just like on a Glock because Glocks use normally plastic mag release but um, this one's metal that's nice and it does just click in um, this is your magazine release like normal on a normal AK and what you do is you push that forward and then drop this magazine uh, adapter out just like a, uh, you would on a, a magazine on an AK now, there's a tongue in the front that slides into a little lip here and then it just locks in um, this thing is in here super tight though guys I, I can't get it out to be honest with you not not without tapping it with a hammer but just manually pulling it out it's in there super tight it's not coming out so I don't plan on swapping this out for any other uh, caliber adapters speaking of which they do make an adapter uh, this piece here pops out this is actually a shell right here and then this piece slides out and you can put uh, a different adapter here for Beretta magazines so if you want to run Beretta magazines uh, you could do that as well some guys have a whole bunch of Beretta magazines from their uh, you know their M9 so that's kind of cool options are always good right uh, Glock magazines, like I said, are some of the best on earth. One of the downsides to this setup, though, is um, it is set up for right-handers only, for the most part. The button is on the left side of the gun, so my support hand just comes right up here and takes it out, no problem. Great if you're right-handed, not so great if you're lefty. But, as you can see, if you are lefty, you just come up like this with your trigger finger, hit that button, and a lefty can do that, no problem. So, not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Another thing to notice too, aesthetically, this is kind of ugly, right? It's just a mag release with a flat spring right here that exposed, and it kind of looks unsightly. It's an AK though, so AK guys don't care about looks, they care about function. If it, if it functions 100%, who gives a damn what it looks like? All right, so if you buy the NAC 9X, it will ship with one 33 round Glock mag. This one's made by KCI, they're Korean if you don't know. It's marked KCI USA though, because I guess they moved their operations out here to the US. All right, so let's take this out to the range and just do some basic function testing. I'm not gonna do any accuracy testing at this moment. Uh, just go out there and pop off some rounds and see how it runs. All right, so we uh, got the Century Arms NAC 9X at the range just to do a function test to see if this thing runs. Uh, I'm gonna run it with um, all the magazines I have. I have a Glock 26 uh, magazine, a Glock 19 magazine, a Glock 17 magazine, and a Glock 18 magazine. So let's see how it runs. First shots. So here's the uh, subcompact magazine from the Glock 26, 10 rounds. There we go. Nice. All right, let's move on to the Glock 19 compact. That is 15 rounds of nine millimeter. By the way, this is Winchester steel cased ammo. I figured it was appropriate since this is an AK that will run uh, steel cased ammo through it. Probably some of the worst ammo you can use in a nine millimeter handgun, but this is an AK, so it should be just fine. And we're out. All right, so next up is the Glock 17 round magazine with 17 rounds. Oh. 
then lastly, this is the Glock 18 33 round magazine. I only have, uh, I think about 31, 30 or 31 rounds loaded in here. Let's see how it runs. Oh, got a little bit of a malfunction. Again, these are the Korean KSI magazines. Let's take a look what happened here. Looks like the round did not feed into the chamber. For whatever reason, it didn't go straight in. Let's try to clear that sucker up. I'm gonna just strip and rip. All right, I purposely held this thing muzzle up to the sky to see if that round would fall inside and behind the bolt into the fire control group like we saw on the uh, Mac video. Tim from Military Arms Channel did this exact same thing I'm doing here. And it looks like it fell right out. The way it's designed, it will not fall behind the bolt. It will not fall inside the trigger group because there's no room in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's no room for a shell to fall inside there the way it's designed. So they got that one right. there let's take a look oh it did not strip off a new round I think uh, the ammo is actually not being pushed up by the uh, follower yeah I can see it it's not being pushed up by the follower yeah that follower look, sounds like it's uh, kind of jammed up in there let's see if we can uh, get this thing to loosen up There we go. So this KCI magazine seems to be super dry and the follower seems a little little uh, sticky inside there. Don't think it's the uh, problem with the gun. I, I think it's 100% a problem with the uh, Korean KCI magazines. It did feel a little scratchy uh, when I was loading it up as I was pushing the rounds in. It, it, it felt kind of gritty in there. I think that magazine uh, follower is just not smooth. And that's it, we're out. All right, so as you can see, this does not have a last shot bolt hold open. If you don't know what that is, um, that's normally when the magazine is empty, it, the follower pushes up on a little uh, piece of metal, which holds the bolt to the rear on the last shot. This does not have that. So, par for the course for AKs, almost all AKs don't have a last shot bolt hold open. So no biggie there if you're an AK guy. But if you like that uh, feature of having a last shot bolt hold open, uh, you may have to go with another gun. So as you saw, um, I had zero malfunctions with the factory Glock magazines. Uh, even though I was using um, steel cased cheap ball ammo, uh, the only malfunctions I had were on the KCI Korean magazine. So I can't even blame the malfunction on the ammo. I blame the uh, malfunctions on that KCI magazine 100%. All right, so I, I wanna do one more test before I go. I wanna do a rapid fire test to see if I can induce some type of feeding issue with rapid trigger pulls. Uh, this is 15 rounds uh, out of the factory Glock magazine with the steel case ammo. And uh, let's see if we can get this thing to malfunction with really fast trigger pulls. All right, here we go. Nope, flawless, no problem. All right guys, so there you have it. That is my initial detailed inspection and test fire of the brand new Century Arms NAC 9X 9mm AK. Uh, my first impression with this thing is I really like this thing, man. It has its uh, pros and a couple cons. The, they're real minor, but overall, I think this thing is a fantastic, fun gun. If you're looking for a 9mm AK, 
I mean, this thing is really hard to beat. Uh, I think the street price on these things are going to be roughly around 600 bucks um, at the gun stores. I think MSRP is uh, north of 700, but I've seen a couple places that are like 600, 650, 699. So just give it some time. I'm sure this will hover around the $600 price range for sure. But uh, I think this is a lot of fun. Again, like I think this is uh, really good for home defense. If you want a nine millimeter home defense uh, pistol caliber carbine um, or a truck gun, you know, sitting in your truck if you need it for um, quick defense when you're uh, out and about, out in the back country, uh, or just a range, a range gun for plinking and having fun. I think it's fantastic. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button to support my channel. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Century Arms Draco NAC9X 9mm AK. What did you like? What do you not like? Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.